Let me ask the question again. Did you follow Mr. Johnson's instructions? For the most part, yes. Okay. A few questions back, you stated that you never conferred with Mr. Johnson okay. about Mr. Tostage's CA2 or CA17 upon sending him home. You sent him home on your own. Would that be correct? That is correct. But yet here it says that you and Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson actually gave you instructions and directed you what to do. Am I correct? That is not correct. Okay. What did Mr. Johnson instruct you to do? To forward the form to injury compensation. A minute ago, you just said you didn't have any um, conferences, talks, conversations with Mr. Johnson. Would that be correct? That would Concerning be, that the CA2? Would, that it would be okay. correct. But he told you to send it on to injury compensation? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Okay. Did he tell you to tell Mr. Tasha to go home? in return when his doctor gave him clearance to work? No. Who told you that? Nobody. So, Mr. Johnson answered this question in 21. Would you agree to that? He says so. Whose signature is at the bottom left? Mr. Of Mr. 00 0225. Conrad Johnson. Okay. Would you agree that Mr. Johnson answered this question and he directed you to Yes. Okay. Is this statement true? For the most part. <clears throat> Did Mr. Johnson direct you to send Mr. Tostage home? No. Did Mr. Johnson tell you to tell Mr. Tostage to go to his doctor to get him clearance to work. Don't recall that. Did Mr. Tostage turn in medical documentation to you on May 16, 2011, concerning his return to work? I don't recall without seeing the documentation. So he did hand something in to you? I do not recall. Do you know how Mr. Tostage returned to work on May 17, 2011? I don't recall. On May 10, 2011, you told Mr. Tosh to leave work at the end of his shift, am I correct? That is correct. And he couldn't return to work until what or when? Until he was cleared. Cleared for what? For work. What does that mean? Cleared without restriction. Without restrictions. So he couldn't come back to work unless he had no restrictions. Would that be correct? Without approval, without approval, yes. That's what you told him, correct? Yes. Okay. At this point in time, did you make mention to Mr. Johnson about him needing accommodation based on his restrictions that you sent him home for? We might have talked about it. I, I don't recall. I want you to go to 00213 on the ROI, please. Then the top says claim three. I'm going to read there until the word AWOL. 
on or about September 2nd, 2011, and other spe unspecified occasions, the complainant's request for reasonable accommodation was refused, and subsequently he was considered AWOL. 39, can you read from the complainant to the end? Oh, I'm going to read that. I'm sorry. 39, I'm going to read that. The complainant asserts that on March 8, 2011, May 4th, May 9th, May 10th, May 17th, 20, May 26th, May 27th, 2011, June 3rd, June 14th, June 17th, of 2011, July 13th of 2011, and September 2nd of 2011, he requested accommodation for a medical condition concerning his hearing, and his requests were ignored. Has the complainant requested reasonable accommodation for his hearing, and if so, when and how did he request accommodation? If written, please provide copies. Can you see the bottom signature, bottom left-hand corner, Mr. Owensby? Yes, I can. Whose signature is that? It's my signature. What date did you sign this? 11-22-11. Can you read your complete answer to number 39, please? Just yes. the answer. The complainant, complainant did verbally request reasonable accommodations for his hearing condition. However, action was not taken. Okay, stop right there. Why wasn't action taken? I didn't know what action to be taken. So you did nothing? So I did nothing. Okay. I'll move on. I'm going to read to you question number 41 on 00213 of the ROI. The complainant asserts that on May 17, 2011, he returned to duty with a CA-17 dated May 16, 2011, which included a medical statement dated May 16, 2011, from his physician requiring at least half of the complainant's work hours to be spent in a low noise office situation. The complainant asserts that he was accommodated for approximately one week, and after that, his restrictions were ignored. Did you make the decision to end the accommodation? If yes, please explain why. Now, please read out the first sentence of your answer. Out loud, please. The complainant was not accommodated. Why not? There was no need. There was no need for Mr. Tasha to be accommodated? Not in my eyes, no. Not in your eyes. Are you a doctor? No. Do you have any certifications in audiology, any degrees in audiology? No. Okay. Did you ever tell Mr. Tostridge he was not going to be accommodated? No. Why not? Again, I, I didn't see the need for accommodation. You didn't see the need? Was that your answer? That was my answer. So you did know that he was requesting an accommodation, but you felt, or you didn't see a need for him to be accommodated, correct? His doctor requested low noise. What's low noise? Don't have the answer. Okay. Who would have the answer? Most likely a medical professional. Okay. Refer to page 00214 of the ROI, please. Number 43, question. I'm going to ask, I'm going to read it out loud. What specific accommodation or accommodations did the complainant request? Please read your answer, Mr. Owensby. His request was four hours of office duty, four hours on the floor. Okay. I'm going to read to you question number 44. What action was taken as a result of his request or request? Please be specific. Please read your answer in, in its entirety. None. I have no high noise areas. What's a high noise area? Mm, above the OSHA standard. What's OSHA standards? I believe 84 decibel. 84 now? 94. Thank 94. You. What's a low noise area? Below OSHA standards. What's, what's OSHA standards for low noise? Don't know. Who it's would know? A medical doctor. A medical doctor. Okay, I'm going to read to you question number 46 out loud. How does the complainant's requested accommodation relate to the complainant's ability to perform the duties required in the complaint, complainant's assignment? Accommodation requests must go through the DRAC. Please read your answer. 
Oh, I'm sorry. That is your, I'm going to read the question again. Let me start all over. How does complainant's, re complainant's requested accommodation relate to the complainant's ability to perform the duties required in the complainant's assignment? Please read your answer in its entirety. The complainant was able to perform all his duties. I have no high noise areas. Please read after the word assignment, question mark. Accommodation request must go through DRAC. Was that your answer? Possibly, yes. Yes. On the bottom left-hand side of this, of page 00214, whose signature is that? Mine. Okay. What day did you sign it? November 22nd, 2011. Did you inform the DRAC of Mr. Tosh's condition at this point in time? No, by this time the DRAC committee was already notified. Okay. Again, number 49 states, I'm going to read the question again. If the complainant's requested accommodation was not granted in part or in whole, why? Please explain in detail. Please read your answer, Mr. Owensby. I have no high noise area. When did you become aware of the DRAC? Upon returning from school in October. In October. Who informed you of the DRAC? Mr. Johnson and uh, Supervisor Greg Fields. What did they inform you of? That Mr. Tassas was re referred to the DRAC. Why? due to his restrictions and requests for accommodation. His restrictions for what? For hearing. Hearing. They were contained on the CA-17 handed into you on May 16, 2011, correct? That's correct. Okay. You let him work after May 16, 2011, correct, with those restrictions? I'd have to see the documentation. What documentation would you like to see? The, the medical documentation of CA-17s for that period. You just stated for the record that you did allow Mr. Mr. Tasha back to work based on the CA-17 that he handed into you on May 16, 2011, correct? No. You didn't. Can you reread read his answer back to that question? It's, it's going to take a few minutes. Okay, no problem. Okay. I'm going to read a few questions to you. Hearing that they were contained on the CA-17, he handed to you on May 16, 2011, correct? That's correct. You let him work after May 16, 2011, correct, with those restrictions? I would have to see the documentation. What documentation do you need to see, Mr. Owensby? CA-17. The one you accepted on May 16, 2011? I believe from Mr. so. Tostage? Okay.
Yes. Yeah, gotta we're, gonna, we're gonna stop. If you don't mind, we're gonna take a quick one, break. Fine. It's one thirty-eight. We're back on the record. Still wants to be. I'm gonna refer to page zero zero two five one of the ROI concerning the CEO. Zero zero two five one. Yes, sir. Did you receive the CA-17 from the Mr. Tostage? Yes. Okay. Are there any restrictions? Doctor has attached a, a letter to it. Okay. Let's go back to page 00251. Please look at line S, noted as S. Yep. It says noise. N-A. Is there a restriction? See separate type note. Okay, let's refer to page 00252. Is that the note? That is the note. Did you receive that note? Yes. Okay. After to whom it may concern, please read the next two lines. I feel the patient would be better suited if at least half his work hours were spent in a low noise office condition. We'll reevaluate Mr. Tossage in 30 days. Okay. Do that Mr. Tasha's return to work based on this note, correct? That is correct. Okay. Were there restrictions? His previous restrictions were removed. Were there restrictions on this CA-17 on page 00251 that you accepted on May 16, 2011 and let Mr. Tasha's return to work on May 17, 2011? Yes. Okay. So you accommodated him? Yes. Okay. Within his restrictions, he was allowed to work, correct? Yes, I, I, I didn't, yes. What did Mr. Tostitz take from May 10th, the date you sent him home, May 17th upon his return to work. What type of leave did he take? I would have to refute, re refer to the documentation. Did you tell Mr. Tosh that you could take annual sick leave? Um, I believe that's, that's a fair statement. Okay. Did you ever call Mr. Tosh after he left the building on May 10, 2011 and before May 17, 2011? I believe I had. Okay. What did you tell him in this conversation? I can't recall. Absolutely. Did you tell Mr. Tosh that he couldn't take sick leave? I really can't recall. What can you recall from the conversation? That we had a conversation. About what? It, it, had, to, it had to do with work. It had to do with work. About his leave? Probably. Okay. Did you tell him he had to take either annual or LWAP in this phone conversation? I cannot recall. Did you tell him he wasn't allowed to take sick leave? Again, I cannot recall. I'm going to give you a copy of attachment six to response to complainant's request for production of documents. It's a, give me a copy. Please tell me what that is. 3971. Who's the, who's, what employee is it for? Mr. Kirk Tostage. What's the date? Date submitted 511. 5-11-11, okay. What's requested as type of leave? Sick leave, sent home. Okay. Who sent him home? I sent him home. Okay. He took sick leave? He took sick leave. Okay. You allowed him to take sick leave then, correct? He requested sick leave. Did you approve that? I can't recall. What do you mean you can't recall? You're a supervisor, correct? I am a supervisor. Who approves, who approves Mr. Tossage's leave? Uh, I would approve it. Okay. Did you approve that leave? I can't recall. There's no signature on this leave form. Okay. Th this was provided by agency's counsel, Mr. Morris. Mm -hmm. came, came from your file. Can we view 3972? Let's do that. 
Let's get to this one right over here. Would you mind if I borrow it? Okay. puts that one on there. Does it go back that far on that one? I don't think so. Goes back That's only one page. page. Just ask me about the L warp. I'd want to fit down there too. In the A warp. Okay. Let's go to attach, attachment six, response to complainants, requests for documents. The highlighted sections, what's the dates? September 18th through the 22nd, and September 25th through September 30th. The first section of dates, what did Mr. Tostridge take? FMLA LWAP. Mr. Tostridge did take LWAP? Yes. Did you approve that? Without seeing a leave slip or the input, I have to say yes. Okay. You approved his LWAP then, correct? That is correct. Okay. The next block of dates highlighted. Yes, sir. What leave did Mr. Tostridge take? AWOL. Who put him in an AWOL status? I did. Why? Because he no longer had any FMLA. No longer had it. So once a person runs out of FMLA, they're automatically in an AWOL status. Nope. He had requested LWAP, and that had to go before the plant manager. Why? LWAP is approved at plant manager level. You just stated that you approved that LWAP. FMLA LWAP. It's LWAP, correct? Leave without pay? FMLA LWAP. What's the difference? One is job protection. Job protection? Yes. What does that mean? It means I have been given the authority by the plant manager to approve FMLA LWAP. Why was Mr. Tostage out for this period of time? For his hearing restriction. So once he ran out of FMLA, job protected, LWAP, he was in an AWOL status for the same restrictions. Am I correct? And that was an error. Who placed him in AWOL? I did. Okay. All right, I'll take that. Thank you. Back to you. Okay. A letter dated August 29, 2011, which was corrected to be dated September 29, 2011, stipulated, mm -hmm. um, was sent to Mr. Tostage. Who wrote that letter? I did. You wrote that letter in its entirety? In its entirety. Okay. Why'd you write that letter? Because Mr. Tassage is no longer covered by FMLA. So because he wasn't covered by FMLA, you said you're now going to be in an AWOL status because you're no longer covered under FMLA, correct? That is correct. Okay. Can you go to page 00096 of the ROI, please? I have it. Okay. You recall writing this in letter in its entirety? Pretty much so. Pretty much so. Did anybody else help you write this letter? I might have taken excerpts from other letters. Whose letters? I, I cannot recall. You can't recall. Did anybody assist you in writing this letter? No. Okay. In this letter, two pages that you wrote to Mr. Tostage. Yes. Does it anywhere say here that you ran out of FMLA, so we're going to charge your AWOL? Yes, it does. Okay. Well, it does. Where does it say that, please? No, it does not say that. Okay. The first paragraph below, postal records indicate. It starts out with, it is your responsibility. It ends with absence. Can you read that, please? It is your responsibility to keep management informed if you are unable to maintain your assigned schedule. You're also required to provide and an anticipate return to work dates and documentation to support your continued ab absence. While you were called in to report for absence, uh, you have failed to supply the proper documentation for your extended absence.
did Ms. Tostage ever provide any medical documentation yes, at the writing did. of this letter? Yes, he has. Why did you write that to him then? Mm -hmm. It's poor, poor wordsmithing on my part from copying other messages. So Mr. Tostage did report his absences to yes. you. Okay. What is AWOL? Absent without leave. Why is somebody charged AWOL? They're absent without leave. What would be a condition somebody's an employee is charged AWOL? Employee doesn't fails to show up at work on schedule. You don't know where they are, correct? Okay. Did you know where Mr. Tostage was? Yes. Did you know why he was out? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do two things here. Well, I'm going to do one at a time. This is attachment six, again, to response to complainant's request for production of documents. I'm going to give you a copy. Please tell me what that is. This is an employee key indicator report. Okay. What is it? Well, who is it for? It's for Mr. Tossage. Who puts information into that? Supervisors. Who, who put information into that specific one? I have put some of this information in. Okay. On September 30th, is there anything notated for his time out there? Or September, oh, I'm sorry. September 30, 2011. Anything dated there? No, sir. Okay. September 29th. On September 26, 2011, there's an input. Please read that input for that date. Received doctor's note that employee will not be able to work for the next 30 days due to her neck and back problems. So we supplied medical documentation on the 26th, correct? Uh, yes. You put that in? Most likely. Okay. On September 30th, you wrote this letter, correct? Yes. Okay. Go to 00101 of the ROI, please. Can you tell me what that is? From 00101 to ending at 00103. This appears to be an EO. Filed by Mr. Tostage? Filed by Mr. Tostage. Please read the header, the, 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 the title of this. United below. States Postal Service, Equal Opportunity Opportunity. Let's go below the Patrick R. Donahoe and the agency, below that line, that, that header. Acceptance for investigation. Okay. Please read the first paragraph. Receipt of your formal complaint of discrimination referenced above is herein acknowledged. Your complaint has been accepted for investigation. The scope of the investigation will include the following issues only. Okay. 00103 page of the R page 00103 of the ROI. Okay. What's the date? September 29th, 2011. So again, Ms. Tatasha's EEO was accepted for investigation on September 29th, 2011, correct? Yes. Okay. And on September 30th, you wrote him a letter charging him AWOL, correct? That is correct. Okay. Let's refer back to those letters, page 00096. And 0097 of the ROI, please. Okay. Starting with based on, please read to the